All right, uh, here we go. All right, uh, good morning or good afternoon, everybody. Uh, my name is Eric, and I'm going to show you guys how to build a sandbox today. Um, so the first thing that I did was I'm running this program called Hexographer. Um, this is just one of many different programs that does sort of like a hex building kind of thing. And um, as you can see, it's blank. But I have this template set up, um, and it's just I'm going to talk quickly about why this template's so great. Um, so this template set up, uh, it's called a regional template, and it's called that because each of these squares is going to be a, like a length of about six miles. Um, so that's like the side. So each side here is six miles. Um, there's five of them here. Uh, it, it just and I'll talk about this in a later video, but basically the math works out very well for adventuring and rolling, um, like when you're actually running a uh, exploration type game and you're trying to come up with encounters and stuff like that um, the, the marching time and everything works out very well for this sort of math uh, so the first thing you want to do is have basically seven regional hexes um, from what I described um, so this the first step is just to get this map here and just focus on seven so that's six um, hexes um, all touching this one center hex here and for simplicity's sake um, go ahead and just put like a your like starting city or wherever your players are going to start um, just like right in the middle I'm just going to mark it green for now um, the best part about doing that in the middle is that this is not going to be your entire world forever and this is just going to be just your starting place you know maybe get your adventures from level like 1 to 5 or whatever type of game you're playing this is plenty to like ho hold someone off for about a couple you know like maybe 1 to one to 3 months of adventuring so um, the first thing we're going to do, uh, so now we have this map here, and we know our city is going to go in the middle. Um, we're just going to paint some broad strokes about what's going to be around the city and kind of in this area. So this is approximately, uh, if I said this was like six miles, um, so this is going to be what? I think that's seven miles in terms of math for a hex. So that's seven times four, so this is like 280 miles north. So this is like this from top to bottom to the middle here. This is like, I don't know, I'm bad at math. I think that's 280. Um, so this is a pretty big region. So this is plenty of, of stuff. Uh, Hanger Flying asked, did you make the Templar or did you pull the Welsh, Pi Welsh Piper? No, I pulled the Welsh Piper one. And I'm going to be including all the links for all the things that I, I'm using right now uh, for everyone at the end of this video uh, in, like, in the bot or whatever. Um, so just hold on for that. Um, so what we're going to do now is we're going to start coming up with some resources that kind of populate this map. And uh, resources are going to help tell us a little bit about terrain, uh, because depending on the resource, it can tell us the terrain. And resources are going to be kind of like what our factions are going to be fighting over. Um, they're like kind of like valuable points. Um, so the idea is that we're going to have sort of like communities or factions or towns or settlements or something, and they all want like more power, and they get more power by taking resources. So we're going to start up by figuring out what our resources are. So. Um, I have no idea what's going to happen uh, before this. Like I'm going at this completely from scratch, other than just bringing up this template here and uh, this this sort of like algorithm and this sort of Excel spreadsheet I had beforehand. So we're gonna do this all just completely live. I have no idea what's gonna be. Uh, we're gonna find out together. So um, we're gonna do the select five hexes to contain resources here. Um, so I'm gonna go over to the resources tab. All right, um, so you can see here I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I have eight options for resources. Um, right now, this is just the stuff I came up with right now. Yeah, we'll, we'll do it live. Uh, so, so there's eight possible options, and I need about five of them. So I'm going to go to roll 20, and I'm going to do 5d8. So we got a six, a three, a one, a two, and a three. So I'm going to come over here to just quickly organize my notes. Um, this is a resource, 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 resource. Yeah, this is, oh, by the way, just a heads up, this is just going to be a lot of Excel spreadsheet work. Um, but, you know, so it goes. So we're going to go, I need to copy those numbers over again. Six, three, one, two, three. So I'm just going to put six, three, one, two, three. Um, so, so I can quickly reference 
here. So six would be sorcerer's materials. Sorcerer's materials. Um, in my rep in my resources, I have sorcerer's, sorcerer's materials, which is kind of being described as um, a fountain of magical energy. Um, it's a focus of sorcery. So this could be very broad. Um, I don't know what it's going to be yet, but I just know that one of the places on this map that I'm making is going to have source materials as a resource people are going to fight over. There's value in it. Um, so source materials, three, um, one, two, three, great gathering. So these are going to be rare plants that grow in abundance. Um, it's, it's some sort of like food or berries or plants. It also could be like alchemical ingredients, medicine, um, something like that, or spices. So I'll put gathering here. Uh, number one. Oh, six is rich veins. You're right. See, thank you. Um, so this is actually rich veins. So this is clearly some sort of mineral. Um, it's still pretty early for me. I got up about 30 minutes ago and just had some breakfast. Um, so we are at six, three, the word at one. So resources is abundant agriculture. Um, so this location is prime place for growing food. So it's going to be like our fields and our farms um, for this one. Oops. Uh, two. Oops. Uh, great fishing. So there's going to be some sort of like amazing lake or river here. And then three again, I think was gathering. Yes. So uh, now that we have that set up, um, we're going to go back to our map and we're going to start populating the world with that stuff. Um, so the best thing to do is to start um, putting the resources in sort of like just general areas, trying to keep them somewhat evenly spread out. So I'm going to put rich veins. Um, for me, rich veins kind of to me, it sounds like either mountains or hills. Um, it doesn't have to be, but uh, let's just make it our, our I, let's just put our resources, let's start here. That's gonna be our rich veins, um, great gathering. Um, I think I want one to be woods, like it's gonna be in the woods. So let's just put the woods, you know, try to keep it evenly apart and somewhat symmetric. It doesn't really matter. Um, let's put some woods there for great gathering. Um, let's make another gathering a swamp just for fun. It doesn't have to be. I'm just entirely just making judgment calls. This could also be a forest. It could be plains. It could be anything. Because um, gatherings are just herb spices or um, some sort of like abundance of berries or something like that. Um, but I like the idea of there being something rare maybe in a swamp. So I'm going to put a swamp down there. Um, abundant agriculture. So that's going to be some farmland. Let's put some farmland there. And um, let's see, what is it? So those are my two gatherings and fishing. So last one's fishing. So let's just make a lake. Let's make a lake right there. See, so now they're all kind of like spread out or somewhat. And these are like the starting of our resources. So what's going to happen is that a resource just doesn't take a single square. It's kind of bleeds around um, into just the general locations. So we're going to start doing this. Um, start making some more forest, uh, heavy forest. Um, the only different ones will be fishing because that would just be a river, I guess, because it's already a giant lake. Um, so we can make some swamp. And so now let's go ahead and start making some rivers in here. Um, let's make some custom lines. Um, so I'm just figuring how a river would run. So there's one river. Um, like the idea maybe that this is sort of like that lake is a confluence of something. So like perhaps it flows into the swamp. And uh, so it probably comes down this way. You know, um, because it's going to be like hills and stuff like that. So maybe it flows down here. So elevation kind of comes this way. And then something's going to make a swamp down here. There might be more swamp. Might be a lot of swamp, actually. Uh, we don't know yet. So let's just leave it at that. So this is just the quick river. 
we got from great fishing so this is just the beginning of our map so there we go uh, that's our resources for now so we know there's going to be some hills and some mining up here we know there's going to be some forests for gathering down here or swamps for some also some gathering uh, we know there's gonna be a lot of like plains and like agriculture over here like a lot of farming and then we also know that there's this really cool lake um, that has abundant fisheries and that kind of stuff in here. And our city is going to be somewhere in the middle here. So um, once we do that, I'm going to bring back over the good old spreadsheet. Go back to the readme. So five hexes, five hexes to contain resources. Done. Generate four towns. All right, so now we get to start building our towns. And towns is a pretty liberal um, term. It could be a settlement. It could be um, like a lumber camp. It could be sort of like anything that ha just has groups of people. It could, doesn't even have to be human if you are if you want it to be. Um, I'm trying to make this as system agnostic as possible, but it's definitely leaning towards like D&D 5th edition. So we're going to go generate some towns now. So as, as you can see, towns have an origin, they have an activity, and they have an obstacle, and the severity of that obstacle. Um, and I'll talk about a little bit that about each of those once we start generating them. So there's four towns and we need four origins. So I'm gonna go over to the town or city origins and we're gonna see we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, ten. So we, I have ten options right now and I need four towns. So I'm gonna do four uh, D10. Uh, six, three, five, two. So I'm gonna go back to this locations tab make a town, 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 six, three, five, two. So we go back to this origins, uh, one, two, three, four, five, six. All right, so one of our towns is a mercantile hub. Uh, this The city is a hub of trade in the region and flexible and pragmatic with their laws to eke more business to the point of being greedy. So they're a mercantile hub. So I'm going to mark that here. So they're definitely a point of trading. Um, three. One, two, three. Defensive location. This site was founded due to its providential location as a place of military defense. Perhaps it's a site uh, surrounded by three sides by rivers or perched on a hill. Okay. location. Um, I'm letting you know right now like so when I'm thinking of these ideas I'm immediately trying to think of how these will maybe associate with the resources so when I see mercantile hub I'm immediately thinking hmm what if this is possibly around the uh, the the mining places perhaps there's like only a single mountain pass through the or like a, you know through the hills or whatever uh, there might be a trading region like a trading hub right there um, or perhaps uh, it's a defensive location in those hills. Perhaps it's like a fortified border outpost, you know? Like maybe like it's like a ranger fort or something like that. Or maybe it's like a dwarven city or like a dwarven settlement that's that's for trading or, or you know? Like I'm already just trying to think of sort of ideas that stem from, that build off the previous parts that I've already done. Um, or or maybe, um, maybe it's a mercantile hub. Maybe it's like a, a port on like that lake or whatever. Um, where like a lot of people sail stuff down the rivers uh, for trading. I don't know yet. Uh, we'll, we'll figure it out. So uh, five. Uh, one, two, three, four, five. Idealists and innovators. Um, Hangers asks, did you make up these charts or pull the ideas from various resources? Um, I pulled the ideas from resources, but then I also um, removed some things I didn't like, uh, added things that I did like. Um, I did a lot of like combinations because there were a lot of different charts that sort of said the same thing. Um, I realized that you can kind of simplify the charts down to this as, as well as this. Um, so at the end of the video, I'm going to be uh, releasing this online for everyone to use. Um, feel free to modify it and fit your own campaign however you see fit. Um, I actually, and I would love to hear how you change it or, or things that you don't like and things that could be changed. Um, so let's five again. So five was idealists and innovators. Um, the city was founded by an idea. So the original founders were looking to eschew the old ways and explore applying a new social or technological concept or idea. And this risk has paid off, at least in the short term. So hmm. So I'm thinking this might be, um, so these guys kind of like spur um, 
conventions. So these guys might have something, something cool going on, but uh, I'm not sure exactly what they'll be yet. Um, perhaps they might be in the swamps, like figuring out how to navigate the swamps or something like that. I don't know. Um, we'll learn more when we see their activities and sort of what obstacles they face. So idealist innovators. But, um, so the whole point of this is basically inductive creativity, is rely on the stuff that you roll with this, like in the past with other things and kind of come up with ways of how everything interrelates. Um, so this was innovators. Yes, bogs do have peat moss, which is really good for, uh, for drinking, for, for whiskey and scotch and stuff. So uh, the last one is two. Um, one, two, ancient industry. At one point long ago, this site was a, a site of economic investment. Uh, the current denizens leveraged the previous settlers forward thinking uh, in order to provide the area with economic tools. So this place is also going to be a place of like mining or like smithing or like producing something. So that'd be cool. Uh, maybe it's a lumber camp. I don't know. So ancient industry. All right, um, now let's come up with uh, its activities. So activities, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, two to 11, I could just quickly do that. So um, here we go. So from two, so this is going to be a D10, we have four towns, so I'm gonna roll 40, 10. Five, five, two, nine. Um, here's another part about uh, when you're creating towns. If you don't like the rolls, or you get like straight fives, you know, you don't have to use it. Um, so, you know, you can always just re-roll or, or fudge something to make it your your immersive idea or emergent idea come to life. Um, this is just more of like a tool and a guideline than it is an a, a absolute rule. But I'm going to roll with this because this is what I rolled. Um, Wee Wee uh, asks, do you, do you find any use for geography knowledge about demographics for this kind of stuff? Um... Not yet. Uh, that stuff comes a little later. Um, so 5529. Five, so I'm just going to mark that on the locations here. 5529. Five, so let's go to the, the activity. So Mercantile Hub with a 5 is military might. The city has a very strong martial and military tendency. Okay. So this hub is certainly um, built for uh, defense and um, has like a standing army. Uh, defensive location is the same thing. So yeah, so this defensive location, whatever this defensive, this town is or this fort is, like it's clearly made for military. Do you think, uh, so Sith, Mask, uh, Sith Master asks, do you think like a 5d10 drop one of your choice would be a helpful suggestion? Yeah, um, if you don't like to do, just pick what calls out to you um, as like a, or just re-roll. Um, if you prefer like a more like rigid guideline, absolutely. Um, it's very much of what you're okay with. I think I think the ideas that emerge from, from like these sort of reference sheets, um, if they're awesome, go with it. Um, certainly go with the rule of cool. Whatever sounds the coolest to you. The more This is just to get your brain kind of like, flowing with ideas and constraints and whatever comes out from those constraints kind of go with it so if that means rolling and dropping or if it means just something that just pops into your head do it so innovators two uh they're exceptional craftsmen okay uh, this place is home to very high quality crafts And then ancient ind industry with nine. Uh, resource provisioners. Uh, this town is known for one particular resource, grain, timber, fish, and possesses a very strong industry around it. Oh, that makes sense. It's ancient industry. So I just write resources because I'm lazy. All right. And so now we have a, some pretty good ideas for our towns. Um, so we have a mercantile hub. We have a defensive location. Um, we have uh, innovating craftsmen. We have a, just a town full of Steve Jobs. And then we have an ancient industry who is super into one resource. So let's go back to our map here. Um, and now we kind of pick uh, 
towns to kind of put somewhere kind of between our resources in a way. Um, so what I'm going to do is just make a icon for these towns. Uh, I'm just going to make a little house. Um, yeah, I like the idea of having like a border fort or something for like near this mining. So there's one town. Um, I'm just going to mark where it is. Um, so this is Mercantile Hub with Military Might. Um, so I like the idea that this is a, um, a trade route to the north. Um, and so I'm going to probably, that means that this probably sits in sort of like a mountain pass. So there's probably more hills around it. Um, and then probably jutting into some mountains beyond it. Um, so I'm just going to mark that's 1505 in terms of the hex. I marked that off screen, but just so you see, I just marked it um, 1505. Uh, defensive location, military might. Um, let's see. Defensive location, military might. Um, let's put that. Let's put that over here. Um, perhaps there's something dangerous that lives in the swamps. Um, perhaps there's a, um, it's sort of, perhaps maybe the swamps are almost even unnatural or something. Like perhaps there's something that, that ekes forward and this is sort of like a, um, like a, a, a wall around to stop the swamp, sort of like a military levy or whatever. Maybe that's what makes the farmland so fertile or something. I don't know. Uh, we'll figure it out. But, um, so I'm going to make another town. Um, boop. I actually want to. I want it there, um, so it's closer to that. And this is our this is our defensive location with military might. Um, perhaps it's a fordable location because it's bordered by like unpassable swamp on like three sides. Um, so maybe maybe it like juts around and it can overlook the farmland or something like that. It, like it's just a really good spot. Um, or also maybe it sits on a road that goes this way. Uh, we don't know. I don't know yet. Um, innovators, exceptional craftsmen. Um, oh, let me mark this as 1011. And let's go innovators, exceptional craftsmen. I like the idea of a lumber camp, of like lumber specialized, like specialized lumber. Um, so I'm going to make a guy go right here. Uh, so that is 1909. And the last one was ancient industry with resources. Um, this makes me think of perhaps the fishers, uh, the fishermen, and they're all about, they just been fishing and utilizing this lake. So I'm going to build a town on that lake. Boop. All right. Um, so there we go. And that's 1912. So those are, those are the beginning of the towns. As you can see, I haven't come up with names for these towns. I really just don't know. I'm just painting in broad strokes right now of what they could be in relation to where they are on the map. Um, and, as you, and as you can see already, um, my decision to place these things in the order that I did completely changes how I, I set up the game. Um, I could have chose to put the mercantile hub on the on the lake, and it's a trading lake. Um, just something like that. Just sort of like ideas flowing, um, just whatever you come up with, right? Um, okay, so towns are done. Let's go back to my little algorithm here. Oh, I didn't come up with the obstacles. So city obstacles. So this is something that's always going on in towns. This is the reason why towns don't just instantly expand out from anywhere. There's always something that's sort of like bothering a town and could be a reason for adventurers um, in the first place. So here we go. These are the city obstacles. And I have uh, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 11. I have 11. So I'm going to roll a d12 and then just ignore 12. I have four towns, so I'm going to slash roll 4d12. 9921. So go to locations. 
I'm gonna put nine, nine, two, one. So I'm gonna go to the city obstacles. Nine is recovery. Something in the past has destroyed a lot of this place's assets and industry. Many areas of this place need to be rebuilt from a passing storm or natural disaster or war. Okay. So. Oh, that makes sense. So mercantile hub, um, perhaps there was a, a band or something that came through here uh, in the past. So I'll put um, recovering. Uh, this is the same. Um, so they're clearly like they don't have a they don't have any time to be looking outward right now because they're focused on their internal problems, which is like rebuilding their infrastructure, rebuilding their um, defenses. Um, and as you can see with obstacles, obstacles always have a sort of like a tag to them in a way. So basically to fix um, recovery, they're going to need money. Um, they're going to need to reinvest in, in their town with money or resources and time. Just It's going to take investment to solve this problem. Um, so two and one. So obstacles two. Economic class issues. The location is full of spite between economic groups. Fis fixing this problem requires fixing the socioeconomic hierarchy. Yeah, so this is like a super unequal type of place. Um, innovators with exceptional craftsmen. Um, with um, economic class issues. I forget what I actually said, so I'm just going to say economic class issues right now. Um, let me go back over here. Yeah, that's right. Okay. Um, and the severity attribute is how um, how much of a problem this is. Um, so I'm looking at an idea for innovators and exceptional craftsmen. This makes me think that the people who have, like, is basically the people who own the town um, sort of have control over it uh, in sort of like an anar anarcho-capitalist kind of way that like, you know, like your, your factory owners versus the laborers. Um, I'm starting to, starting to see that political dynamic in this town. And then ancient industry resources. So the fishing town. Um, the fishing town, its obstacle is, uh, I forgot what it said, one. Uh, seedy reputation. So this is a hive of scum and villainy. Greedy merchants, thieves, and con men. This imbalance of wealth caused immense amounts of poverty. Uh, the golden rule is king. The one with the gold makes the rules. So this is just straight up greedy um, and, and crime. So this is less like political philosophy and more just like crime and, and drudgery. Um, this makes me think of the, the town on the lake in The Hobbit, in lake, in, you know, like Lake Town, uh, just when everything's just run amok. So something like Moss Eisley meets uh, Lake Town. Yeah, exactly. Um, now that I got all those four down, I'm going to roll severity to see just how big of issues they are in this town, in each of these towns. Um, so that's going to be a d10, so slash roll, 4d10, 3493. Okay, so he's coming along. Um, this was four. This guy's also coming along pretty nicely. The higher the number, the more severe it is. So this one is a nine. So these guys aren't doing anything except just, you know, super, super bad times and three. Okay. So let's go back here. Um, Five hexes to contain ruins. Now, ruins are similar to resources in that people will fight over them because they also have power, but they also have monsters in them. And towns might be hiring adventurers to kind of like get an idea of what's what's kind of out there and if they can use it for their own advantage, probably to help cure their, their own problems themselves so they become stronger. Um, so let's select five hexes to contain ruins. Let's go back to our map. Um, Let's just make some, some symbols here for ruins. I'll just make towers, sure. Um, one ruin. Uh, let me change the color, actually. Uh, let's make them purple. 
because why not? Uh, it's gonna make a okay. Um, one's one ruins there, uh, a ruin there, ruin there. Um, one here and one here. Um, okay. Uh, so I just kind of picked more spots to just add ruins. Um, once again, it could be kind of random, but I like the idea of, of ruins somewhere between like kind of they could fight for resources in a similar way that towns can. Um, so they, I like to position them in a way that um, could interfere uh, with, with trying to do that kind of stuff. So ruins. So let's figure out what our ruins are now. This is this is one of my favorite parts. So locations here, uh, five ruins. Okay, um, and ruins need a nature, a trait, an obstacle, and severity. So let's go to our ruin natures. So there's I only I only have five types of uh, ruin nature right now. But um, this is so it's going to be one, two, so that's just going to be a d6 and uh, just re roll sixes. So that's going to be five d6. Um, all right, so I'm going to have to roll another d6. <laughs> there we go. So a five, four, two, four, four. So. Locations um, five, four, two, four, four. All right. Um, I could see how the city root. Uh, Sith Master says I could see how the city ruin ratio really changes how a game's feel vibe works. Oh, totally. Um, you can season the game um, as as you see fit. So if you're going to build a West Marches game, for instance. Um, perhaps your settlements will be biased towards maybe the civilized side and then have a couple like rare ones on the way that they explore. Um, can you just roll 20 just to do a roll 1d5? You probably could, but like I said, I just kind of woke up and still drinking some coffee. So, um, oops. So, anyways, let's figure out what we what we rolled. So, six, uh, five, four, two, four, four. So our ruin natures. Oh, thank you. If you roll uh, d sixes, the r six means to re-roll sixes. Good to know. Um, so this was a two. Oh, it's on this side. Uh, five. So ruin natures five. Um, dark tower. Once a watch house, lookout, or arcane power place, uh, this place sits in a tactically, a tactically adva advantageous place. So a dark tower. I keep doing that. Um, I haven't decided which of these corresponds to the ones on the map yet. I'm just still trying to do, just come up with what these ruins are. So we have a dark tower. Um, we have a four. Um, crumbled fortification, so a crumbled fort. Uh, once a powerful fortress, this place has fallen into dis disrepair or disuse. Um, this could be a military site, so it could be like a, a fort, um, could be a keep, um, it could be um, just a sort of like, uh, I like, also like the idea of this maybe being like a uh, like a bridge hat, like going over water or something like that. Um, that's also an option, you know, or like a, a bridge over a pass, um, some sort of like defensible or like crumbled kind of location. Um, so crumbled fort. It's good to know because I'm going to have three crumbled forts on this map. So one and a two. Ancient settlement. These ruins date back long, long ago from an ancient time where uh, while time has been unflattering to this place, there's still caches of wealth to be discovered here, but perhaps they were left undisturbed this long for good reason. Ancient settlement. All right, um, so that's just the beginning of our ruins. So that's the nature of the ruins. Uh, you haven't missed that much, uh, Alex. I just kind of started. Um, so those are the nature of the ruins, and now we come up with the traits of the ruins. Um, so here we go again. We have eight 
um, possible ruined traits. Um, and so what we're going to do now is we're going to roll uh, 5d8. Eight three seven six two. So back to locations. Eight three seven six two. Um, so dark tower has an eight. Um, so strategic value. This ruin has tremendous military value and is a location that is prime for exerting influence and dominion. Okay. So the Dark Tower, strategic value. So I'm clearly thinking this is some sort of like watchtower. Um, that's like a really old watchtower. You know, I'm thinking of like Lord of the Rings. Um, you remember like where they sleep, where the um, the Nazgul attack the the guys. I forget the name of it, but like an old watchtower. So it's, it's like kind of creepy or whatever, but just sits prominently on the landscape. Um, that's what immediately what comes to mind for that. Uh, crumbled forts, um, three. Uh, four, uh, great works of art. The site is home to a cache of works of art. Um, the, these works of art have withstood the test of time, and recovering these pieces could herald in a cultural renaissance or great esteem. It could also bestow a sense of pride or hope that connects um, the present days to a glorious past. Um, so I like this idea of being perhaps a, um, a maybe like a provincial um, manor home or something like that but great works of art. Um, something culturally significant in, in this fort. Um, maybe like sculptures or something like that of like a long, like long lost art. I don't know yet. Um, or it could be um, just something from perhaps like a, maybe like a long, like elven civilization that died long ago or something like that, that like you could recover it. Sort of, sort of like an Atlantis or maybe like a, you know, like an ancient Greek kind of feel, maybe. I don't know yet. Um, so then we go to Ancient Settlement um, with a 7. Uh, restless Grave. Uh, the ruin of this site is of a great past conflict. The souls who perish in this conflict are restless and continue to prowl the place from darkness and shadow. Forces looking to control this ruin must have to bargain for passage or subdue these spirits. Restless Grave. So this Ancient Settlement is haunted. Crumbled forts. Um, crumbled forts, a lost lineage. Uh, right? Is that right? Oh no, this one's six. I miscounted. Uh, resource abundance. Extracting or mining this locale could yield to an abundance of a particularly scarce resource. It could be a rare plant, magical stream, jewels, minerals. Certainly, the dangers of this place. Um, exceed um, are exceptional and so kept um, this place from being easily accessed in the past. Any ruler controlling the site could invest in logistics and be rewarded with great profit. So resource abundance. All right, and then another crumpled fort. Forgotten industrial techniques. Uh, this ruin houses clues and insights into techniques and technologies of a particular field. Could be mining, smithing, carpentry, jewel craft, or other profession. Um, cool. So, forgotten and industrial techniques. Perhaps it's sort of like an old armory or something like that, because it's a crumbled fortification with some techniques. I don't know. We'll see. So let's, oh yeah, so let's um, let's go back to the map and see where these things are going to go now. Um, yeah, industrial technicalities. So, um, this thing immediately jumps to my mind, 1512, as the Dark Tower. Um, it jumps to my mind because I like the idea of it just sitting um, prominently in sort of like a, just a nice like green kind of area. Um, and it can just overlook uh, everything. I know when I paint that, it's going to get rid of it, and I hate that fact. But let me just remake it there. So, 1512 has the Dark Tower. Um, oh, let me mark the city itself. City. 
Uh, I should use a different color. Oh god. I ruined everything. Alright, here we go. Boom. Boom. Okay, so the Dark Tower is there, 1512, our city's in the middle here. Um, let's, let's go with Crumbled Forts, great works of art. Um, so now we need a place that's a great work of art. Um, so I'm looking at this map, I'm looking at all these different ruins. So this was a place that was like a cultural place that is no more, which immediately makes me think of the swamp and that it was like maybe the swamp like subsumed, um, like subsumed the area and like this ruinous city or whatever, like it just kind of like sunk into the swamp. So we'd call it like the sunken city or something like that. Uh, you know, maybe it's like full of lizard folk now or something. Like who knows? Uh, you know, it's like sort of like degenerate, um, like, you know, cannibals type people. Who knows? It's just like deep in the swamp. So 1014. Uh-huh. And perhaps the, okay. Like perhaps the resource that you much must gather from the swamp has maybe something to do with that. I don't know. So, um, Hanger asks, ooh, so the ominous tower looming in the distance when the first level heroes leave town. Yeah. <laughs> maybe it's lizard art. Yeah, it could be like something from like an ancient Saurian empire, right? From like before mankind ruled this place, um, you know, in a very like sword and sorcery way. Um, I don't know yet. It could we don't like it. It could be kind of anything right now. But yeah, I'm kind of leaning towards this lizard artwork or or sort of like ancient ancient like sunken city um, style. So um, that's ten fourteen. Um, ancient settlement. I'm trying to keep an eye on time as well. Uh, so an ancient settlement with a restless grave. Um, let's put something over here because we haven't explored what kind of terrains over here. Um, so perhaps this ancient settlement was. Um, so this is twenty one, ten. Um, maybe it was like a battlefield or something like that. Um, like it was a town like caught in like a clashing conflict. Um, and just the souls were never able to uh, cross to the other side because of just the, the horror. So let's make it um, to reflect the fact that it's sort of like Deadland or whatever. Um, let's just, I'm just looking for something that looks like dead stuff. Um, here we go. That's dead forest. Uh, why am I so bad at this? I don't know, so. Uh, that's probably too much, um, but whatever. Icons. Put the tower there. Let's make the rest of this terrain green. So kind of like there was an ancient battlefield there for now. Uh, there might be some other things in here too, but um, boom. So it's a battlefield, so it's got cursed land kind of. Um, you know, maybe, maybe it's actually forest around it. Um, crumbled fortress, resource abundance. Um, it's got to be one of these two. Uh, immediately, this makes me think of a, a disastrous sort of like mine from a long, long time ago. Um, this could be kind of anything because I haven't really talked any about what could exist out here. Um, so a crumbled fortress um, with a huge amount of resources. Uh, I'm just going to go with here and do the gems because that's the easiest thing that comes to mind right now. So this is 1305, um, and this is a maybe like an, an old um, dwarven outpost or whatever that, you know, like had some sort of like gold mine or whatever, but maybe it got cursed or something like that and everyone died in it or there was some sort of like toxin fungal outbreak or something like that. Who knows? But basically no one, no one goes there anymore, but everyone rumors that there's still a lot of riches to be had. Uh, all right, and the last one is Forgotten Industrial Techniques. Um, so that's the one out here. 
Um, so this could probably this sounds like the the broken the broken armory or something like that. So I'm just gonna put. Oh wait, oh wait. All right. Um, so those are our ruins. Uh, the next thing to do is layers. So layers are sort of like towns, but evil. So instead of just being settlements, these things are active, like active wells of evil. So generate two to four layers. Um, that'd be fun. Let's do that. Um, so I'm going to put layers in spots that I haven't really defined well. So I'm going to go back to my symbols here. I'm going to grab uh, this totem symbol and something like red, because why not? Um, let's mark something like down here. Like there's nothing down here. So let's make a layer. Um, I kind of wish I pushed this ruin up here now, because I want to make a layer. I'm going to make a layer like right here. I'm going to move that ruin. Because you can as a dungeon master. Um, so there, there's a layer there. Um, let's make a layer down here. Make a layer here and a layer here. And let's put a layer in the mountains. Mountain layer. Okay, so let's do five layers. Because why not? So we're going to go back over to the old spreadsheet. I know it says two to five, so I'm going to say or two to four, I made five, just to see what happens. Um, so we go over to the layer nature. Um, so this has two to 11, so it has 10. So I'm gonna roll 5d10, 10. Seven, 10, nine, nine, three. So let's look at the layer natures. Seven. Nesting ground. This place has ideal conditions for some strange or powerful creature to reproduce. Ten. Primordial wickedness. This layer permeates a sense of evil, a place of darkness since the beginning of the world. This is this is a very dangerous and rare sight. Whatever evil causes this place home is unnaturally timeless evil and not to be trifled with easily. Fuge. Prime evil. Uh, nine. Portal. The planar boundaries grow thin in this locale. Intentional or not, otherworldly things have begun bleeding through into the prime material. Oh, cool. There's two portals. Who knows what they go to? And then three. An evil shrine. This is the home for a fanatical, obscure cult or the place of worship convening for a sect of wicked monks. Cool. Super cool. Um, all right. So now we have to go over and document where these layers are. So I'm moving this over just so we can look at the map um, and kind of figure out where we kind of want these things. Um, let's go with, oh, that's left over from microscope that I bought. Um, so uh, Alex asks, how much of this is based on Kevin Crawford's material? Uh, I would say about 80% of it's based off that. Because um, as you can tell, it kind of follows sort of like a sector generation mechanic. Um, it's, it's very, very much like kind of choose what you want, pick from these tables in a very Craw Kevin Crawfordy way. Um, so let's, let's see, um, I'll bring this over so we can kind of look at it together. Um, we had, we need a nesting ground. Um, we don't even know what monster this is yet. Um, but I, I feel like developing something down here or down here because we haven't yet. Um, so I'm going to make this a nesting ground. And I like the idea of it being hilly, um, something that grows in a hill, um, maybe even underground or something like that. 
So I'm just going to. So I'm, I'm basically just coming up with an idea for a nesting ground for something. So as you can see, this could easily be a forest if you're thinking of like a unicorn or something like that. It could be mountains if it's like a red dragon. Um, it could be more swamp if it's like a black dragon's lair. Um, whatever. You, so it's a nesting ground of some kind of like cool monster. But for me, I'm going to do hills uh, just for now because that's what I'm thinking is cool. So... Uh, Kevin Crawford made Stars Without Number, um, which is kind of like a space map making type, you know, like a Firefly or Traveler kind of game. Um, so let's go with, so this is, this is the lair. This is, this is the nesting place. So the nesting ground has um, 1315. Uh, the primeval location. I like the primeval location being... Um, maybe, maybe, um, up here, 2106. I have no idea what it is yet. Um, primeval. Makes me think of ancient caves or underground. Um, so maybe, maybe this has some forested hills and then goes into... mountains or maybe maybe it's like a lonely mountain yeah and then this is kind of just like plains around it or grassland and I'm gonna make that simple again yeah that sounds really cool I like that stuff yeah or like a fae like something fae related totally um I sure wish I thought of that um, I might do that for the planar ones, because I think the last two layers we have to make are planar related. Um, yeah, so we need a portal. I love the idea that um, Fae are bleeding into the land, and I like the idea that it's coming here near the farms, because now we can hear about there's a, you know, there's a town, and there's rumors of the farmlands here, and they're getting like their sheep stolen and things like that um, over here. So, you know, like, so Faye are up to some mischievous stuff. And Faye, for me, kind of live in the woods. So I'm going to make a forest over here. Um, sort of like Sylvan territory. I hate the fact that if you make an icon before you make the terrain, it deletes the, the symbol, the icon. But um, there you have it. So there's one. So the Faye wilds are bleeding into the forest over here. Why? We don't know. Um, this will be, that will be for another time, but so this portal is sitting in 0809. And I, whatever. Um, so there's another portal now. Let's do something different. Um, let's do a portal up here. Um, I like the idea of a portal that's not nice. Um, what if it's, what if it's, so it's a mountain portal? Um, what if it's like coming in through the abyss, through like the underdark or something like that? Um, perhaps that's the reason why this place is recovering from a, um, a mil like a, a military battle or something like that. Perhaps, perhaps either this excursion came over here or something came down through the, the mountains. Um, but so there's some sort of strange portal coming up here from 1503 that attacks from the mountains, either underground or above ground. And then the last one would be an evil shrine in 2114. Um, this is clearly going to be like a dark um, college of some kind, because I like that idea. Um, so let's just make some grassland. And put that symbol there. Okay, so um, elemental portal, the source of mountains. Totally, that absolutely could be. Um, it it could be. So this is just like to get you started with building your your game. So um, I have about five minutes left, and I just want to show recap of kind of what we did. Um, oh, actually, hold on. There's one more thing I want to do in these five minutes. So something that we didn't do is come up with obstacles for these resources. Um, 
So resources themselves have problems surrounding them to give you ideas. So here's some, here's my resource obstacles list. Um, it's two to 13, so there's 12 here. Um, so let's come up with, uh, oh, these are ruin obstacles, oops. Um, resource obstacles here, so two to 12. So this is actually 11. So I have five resources, so I'm gonna do five to 11. One nine four four two. So, look at the problem for the rich veins. Aspiring conquerors. Awesome. So uh, these ruins are still a location of a splinter group uh, to usurp power. Uh, charismatic leader or an aspiring exiled noble. Cool. Um, so perhaps the, the, these hills and that sort of location um, in, the, in the hills around that ruin and stuff like that, maybe it's all related to um, some sort of like underdark denizen that like killed the dwarves and kind of like took it over and is trying to prepare an attack and perhaps is trying to ally with whatever's coming from that portal. Um, you know, I'm already, I'm already kind of thinking of what's going on in those hills up there. Um, so like this whole area might just be like some sort of like underground Game of Thrones going on. So, Aspiring Conquerors. Um, wait a second, did I just do it again? I was looking at the wrong one. I'm sorry, I was looking at the wrong one. One, never mind, this is a failed settlement. So, there we go. Oops, well that was still a really cool idea. I still might use that. But, so this one was actually a failed settlement. Which works perfect for those ruins, anyways. So, maybe it failed because of something from the Underdark. But anyways, so this was a previous mining camp up in the um in the hills um so like up here right so up here was a failed settlement um perhaps that's why there's, there's this ruin here and if you could just retake those there um there's maybe some more gems or mines in those hills that just no one could take um so it's a failed settlement up here um try to keep this going uh, so this was the Great Gathering Zone, so this was, um, I think this was the forest or the marsh, um, so nine, uh, nine would be a CD reputation, um, so basically, um, there's economic woes and, and greediness that keeps this place from being operated effectively. Perhaps there's a lot of, like, fighting and conniving over this resource? Um, so this is CD Reputation. Um, I like the idea of the forest of having that. Um, and I'll explain why in a second. Perhaps, um, so we know how we have this, this forest here um, that's, that is a, um, I think it already had a CD Reputation for the ancient industry with a resource. No, that was the fish. That was the fishing one. This is the innovators with the craftsmen. Yeah, this was, this is that uh, 1909. Um, yeah. So, what if um, what if this forest and stuff is sort of like run by a couple rival lumber mills and they're constantly trying to get at each other's throats in the woods and sort of like competing for dominance and in exchange like, it's just like bloodshed um, just it's not being operated effectively because too many people they're, they're, people are so paranoid about people stealing each other's lumber and stuff that it's just it's not working right so I'm going to put that CD reputation, um, fighting, CD reputation, slash greedy, conniving, that's fine, uh, great fishing, has a ruin obstacle of four, uh, local political bullying, neighbors are feuding in the more powerful areas taking advantage of the less protected areas and their interests of power. So this sounds like someone's taking over their fishing grounds. So let's go over here. Um, local bullying. So let's go look at our map. Um, what could be bullying over here? Um, it could be. It could be internal. Um, it could be like there's another like smaller settlement kind of around the lake that's technically part of this town. That's sort of like trying to move into their territory. It could be actually the city sort of like fighting that small town for access for the rights for fishing here. 
oh, I love that idea. I love the idea that maybe the city is sort of like taxing um, the, the small town here. Um, so anyways, bullying. Um, and so the last one is get, get, uh, Great Gathering with two. So this was the swamp. So let's look at the obstacle in the swamp. A hazardous resource. Um, so clearly there's something very valuable in the swamp, but it's ha very, very hazardous to grab. Um, it could be physical and magical defenses. Um, was it? Hold on. So political bullying was a ruin tag? Oh. No, it's um, it's a resource tag. It's five. So it was, it was a four, and I rolled a four. I don't know. Um, if I messed up, I, I messed up. I'll review it, and I'll make a correction. And so then the last one here was a two. So resource obstacles. It's the hazardous resource. So something in the swamp is very hazardous to grab. Uh, that kind of makes sense because it's a swamp. Um, I'm not sure what it is yet, the, the resources, but um, I like the idea that it's connected, it's hazardous to people who don't live in the um, in that sunken city. Maybe maybe whatever whatever makes it hazardous also causes like a degeneration or something like that, and it's sort of the reason why that city lost itself and sunk into the swamp because it got obsessed with whatever this material is. So hazardous resource. Okay, um, and the only thing we didn't do yet is actually make the city itself. Um, so let's come up. This is going to be the starting city where people adventure from. Um, I know I'm going to reach a little bit over an hour, but um, just bear with me for a second. So we're looking at 1510. And the city has an origin, an activity, an obstacle, and severity. So I also didn't build up the severities in here for the brevity of time, but um, so let's do a city. Uh, city origin was a one to ten, so it will be ten. An eight. Our city was founded as militant rebels. Um, we can go longer than an hour. Yeah, I know. I was trying to keep this in an hour, but whatever. Uh, so militant rebels, the losers of a civil war, the allies or accomplices of a failed coup, or an exiled army unit settled this place. That kind of makes sense. So imagine if you're this sort of like a border city. Um, this could also be, um, let's tie this into the fact that two other places were devastated. Um, perhaps, perhaps the history of this world is that a few hundred years ago, um, perhaps something happened. Perhaps it was like a battle of humanity versus the Saurians or whatever. And humanity drove the Saurians kind of out, but like at great cost. So like a lot of the, our, our stuff was kind of like rebuilding or like just there was a lot of conflict in war. And um, or perhaps this was like and uh, this was like the big city that's that came up since then. And uh, after we kind of took down the Saurians or whatever, we started building a, a city on top of their stuff and started expanding out. And we started running into all these other problems as well. Um, Maybe. I don't know. That's just an idea. Um, so they are militant rebels, anyways. Oops, that goes over here. Um, they're militant rebels. And what are they doing right now? That's also a D10. Seven. Uh, political government. The settlement is a hotbed of political activity. The locals are very in tune with their community. Perhaps the local regional authorities have granted this location a council-like autonomy and a state of a governor with an ear to the ground. Um, okay, so since, since this is the city um, and they are militant rebels, um, I like the idea of it maybe being like run by um, a pretty fair amount of like almost like a democracy or a republic um, style of town just with a slight martial bent. Um, so political government. And then uh, the last thing to do is come up with the obstacle for the town. And this is uh, 1 to 11, a 9, and then the severity. 
four. So they have a nine for the obstacle. Uh, recovery. Wow. Yep. Something in this place destroyed a lot of the place's assets and industry. So yeah, so there was definitely something like a big disaster or a war that made a lot of these places have to like recover. Um, it's just sort of like a recurring theme in this game is, is rebuilding. Um, so this city, just kind of like this place, and I think this place we're rebuilding each other. So um, recovery. And I rolled a four for its severity. So since it's since all of the recovery ones were like less than five, this uh, the actual war must have happened a long time ago. But they're still kind of like on the breadth of recovery. Since a lower number to recover indicates that it's less severe, um, so these are all kind of around the same time. So perhaps there was just like a an onslaught of monstrous attacks in the past, and we've been slowly rebuilding since then. Um, so now we have. Let me go back to hexographer. So now we have our city. We have our city ideas. Um, we have our um, sort of like monstrous ruins and lairs. Um, sort of getting these ideas of, of what they are, what kind of territory exists. So now we can kind of start fleshing out the rest of the map here. So this was 0906, and what was 0906? Oh, that's because I moved it from 0808. Um, shoot, I wish I remember I knew which what ruin that was. Um, oh, that's this one. Uh, crumbled Fort Forgotten Industrial Techniques. Um, so that's instead of 0906. All right, um, so the crumbled fort here, this is going to be like some barracks. So like the idea that it probably borders some of these hills. Um, perhaps it like sits on a coast, like a, like a canyon or something that like overlooks the river. Um, so I'm going to move that over so I can get to the terrain and build some more hills. Probably grassland around here, and then into more swamp. This whole area down here is swamp. Ah, uh, this won't be swamp. Let me fix that. Just some hills, some more farmland surrounding the city. Um, what if? So cities typically sit on water lines. So like, what if there's like a confluence like that? Um, doesn't mean do anything, but just so the city's sitting on some water. Um, so we have some some farmland around the city, uh, some more grassland, and then we kind of just have to fill in these sort of spots with some more random stuff. Um, some grass, more grassland. Uh, clearly, we don't have a lot of forests, so I'm thinking I'm going to make a little bit of forest around here, just to sort of balance the map out. And we also don't have a, mu a lot of stuff going on down in here. Um, so because there's not a lot going on there, um, I think I'm going to roll up another resource and put a resource down in here, just so there's something else going on. So we're going to make another resource. And may I make a resource is I go to the resource references. Uh, it's a D8, and the obstacles are a 11. A 5 and a slash. A 5 and a 10. So a 5 is a lush pas uh, pasture. So these lands are great for grazing animals. So, more pastures and farmland down here. And 
I rolled a 10 for the obstacle. So it's a toxic resource. So resources produce a lot of post-extraction effort in order to be useful. Hmm. So there must be something about the, ag the, the, the fact that you're using agriculture in this land um, that's just not very good. Um, I wonder what that could be. Hmm. Interesting. Uh, and let me roll the severity of that obstacle. Two. So it's not that bad, but it's certainly something that exists. Um, so let's put here um, lush pastures and the obstacle is toxic um, extraction. Hmm. So something something is polluting the fields, or maybe the animals themselves are polluted. Um, something is causing those fields to not be perfect. Something dark, something worthy of adventuring about. Um, so that's about that's about all I have prepared. Um, as you can see, this is kind of just as how you get started. Um, so going off of what I have done now, um, and just sort of having the seeds of ideas and stuff come up off the, off the brain, um, you can start fleshing out campaign ideas. So if you're going to start, if everybody's going to start in a city, um, and the city is sort of rec uh, slowly recovering from a war, um, you know, some possible adventure ideas would be um, that strange things have been seeing in the Watchtower. Um, what else did I come up with? I forgot some of the things I came up with already. Um, locations. So uh, this was the agriculture. Um, people are, uh, farmers are destroying each other's crops um, in sort of like a paranoia uh, thing. Maybe uh, perhaps because of um, Fey are sort of sort of like a witch hunt going on in the in the agriculture. Uh, people think that there are witches about, um, all because of the Fey from the woods, sort of like you know brainwashing people, uh, tricking stuff. Um, so there's this this big whole thing going on over here. Um, there's also a, you know an, an ancient barracks uh, that I'm sure some town would want for um, perhaps some sort of like smithing ability I'd like to make a better steel something like that um, 1014 uh, this was the Saurian castle and stuff like that perhaps people are saying that there are strange things occurring in the swamp at night um, like perhaps venture over to this town um, that was 1011 that's a defensive location military might oh yeah that's the um this was a border fort uh, just help stem the tide from the swamp. Perhaps the swamp and the swamp material are related. You know how we, uh, we came up with the uh, the swamp, um, where is it? Uh, hazardous resource. So perhaps the it's a hazardous resource is that it, it grows swamp. Um, if you pluck it out, like swamp like starts to like swell up and start like expanding, whatever it is. Maybe it's a really valuable tree. Um, you know, like a mangrove tree or something like that. So, like, the more you take away from it, the more the soil and everything erodes. And perhaps this is sort of, like, sitting on, like, the levee of, like, a wall around the swamp to stop it. Um, but perhaps they're saying, like, they're hearing, like, attacks, like, come over the walls at night. And they're having trouble manning it or something like that. Um, just, like, slowly. Uh, it's just, maybe that's a possible idea. Um, so, like, adventurers can go here. Um and hear rumors about the Saurian kingdom, the sunken the sunken kingdom down here. Um, this is the nesting ground. I have no idea what's gonna live here. In the in in um, you know. I like the idea though. Whatever lives, maybe maybe um, whatever lives here likes to um, maybe it, it it causes some sort of like intoxicant into the soil nearby. Um, I have no idea what that could what could do that, but that's just an idea. Um, 
but also there's no like local township down here there might be a few people who live around in these different areas but um so that's sort of a dynamic going on um so when you're when you're actually wanting to play and you're coming up with these adventures and this will i will go over this in my next video is you kind of take these big points here and you start seeing how they bleed and how they like um conflict with local neighboring areas and those neighboring conflicts is how you come up with your sort of like ideas for your um your sort of like wandering monster tables your sort of like npcs your sort of just general conflicts um so we know we know that this is perhaps related to this toxic thing maybe it has something to do with the swamp perhaps the swamp won't go into the hills because of whatever lives here like stops the swamp from going into it uh, for some strange evil reason uh, I don't know yet um, and on the other side over here um, this is an ancient monastery Ooh, or perhaps perhaps it's the monastery that um, is sort of like Perhaps the, perhaps the monastery is not necessarily evil on the outside. Perhaps it's sort of like a religious site that the farmers go to. Um, but unbeknownst to them is that it's sort of like corrupting the land. Um, and perhaps there's some sort of like intrigue into that. Um, some sort of like evil beneath the surface cult going on. Um, as well as rumors of that the dead are walking again around this battlefield. Um... So that's another one. Um, who knows how these guys relate to each other? And then, um, what did I come up with here? 2106? Oh, that's a primeval thing. So that's like uh, a Balrog or something living underneath the mountain. Um, like rumors of a, um, an ancient being under like the long tooth or something like for a cool name for the mountain. Um, but, uh, but yeah, that's basically all I got right now. Um, just, you know, this is kind of how you start building a sandbox from scratch, is you start just coming up with these large, big, broad tropes. Um, just come up with sort of like these blobs, and you start seeing how these blobs will bleed and fight into the other, each other blobs. Um, so we started with nothing, and I know I made a couple of mistakes. I think I looked at a couple obstacle tables that were wrong. But um, overall, uh, this is kind of what you do. Um, whenever adventurers kind of get tired or you don't know, you just kind of repeat the process for these neighboring major regions. Um, so if you need to know what's up here or around here, um, just start rolling up, uh, ruins. Um, I would probably start with, um, e a major hex either having a town and two ruins or three ruins. Um, depending on how civilized you want your area to be. Um, and then just start kind of procedurally generating, um, more stuff as adventurers start growing further away. But this is, this is more than enough information and cool ideas for, for, your anyone's campaign to get started and like I said I, I mean I did this this it's 12 17 right now uh, so I've been going for about an hour and 17 minutes or yeah like just talking um, so overall uh, like I just literally just pulled this all out of my butt so imagine what you could do with four hours time um, of just like rewriting some of like the conflicts and maybe changing where some things are so anyways this is how you get started um, I will totally, I'll be sending out the links um, to the VODs, uh, in, in the VODs afterwards. Um, actually, let me just send, I'll send this to everyone in the chat for now. Because um, you guys are awesome. Um, Slay Quills asks, do you ever worry about using real rules about nature and climate when crafting the terrain of your maps? Uh, somewhat, like I won't have mountains um, jetting just to nothing, to like grassland. Like it would always go, it would go from like mountains, hills, plains, and sort of like a gradient. Um, sort of how like swamps are always sort of like the lowest possible runoff land. So clearly like this water, this stream flows from north to south and it causes a bend here and I don't know why. Or maybe this sort of dried up um, for some strange reason. So anyways, this is the link to the Google Doc. Um, it's view only, but if you just copied it and saved it into your own um, Google Drive and stuff like that, uh, we'll go from there. Uh, so Hanger asks, oh, where does the Lake River go? Uh, I don't know yet. As you can see, it just it goes from somewhere in this top corner in 0905, uh, probably even further up. Um, just like I said that right now, uh, these the extra peripheral hexes are sort of outside the scope of what I wanted to do today. 
Um, so clearly the source of it comes from somewhere in the north uh, northwest, and it's and it sort of this starts flowing down here um, into this massive lake in 1813, and kind of comes out over here um, somewhere in the swamp. So there's some more of a bend, or perhaps there's some more rivers that go down here. I don't know yet, but it definitely flows in this direction. Um, so. Anyways, I hope this was a lot of help because I know when you anyone who's starting to build a West Marches or sandbox style game, um, it's super daunting to know how to populate things. Um, so I hope uh, my my sort of like bumbling through this sort of algorithm that I have uh, was inspiring. Um, and if you have any changes or edits to my work, please let me know because um, I would love to hear them. Uh, but this this should be kind of like just how you get started, just having general big broad ideas for different parts of your map and how they can generate conflict. And from this conflict, you have quests. Um, just drilling down as much as you want, start coming up with NPCs. And, and in a future video, I'll come up with how to drill down into getting your NPCs, uh, your, your wandering tables, and how to actually do a lot of the exploration type mechanics that make a sandbox game so great. So anyways, thanks a lot, guys. Um, the VODs for this will be on YouTube, um, and I'll have all the